Last week, I posted a YouTube shorts video on a very rare 1962 supercharged fuel-injected Corvette, which received lots of interest and disbelief. Well, today we're going to take you behind the scenes and give you a little more information as to how these very rare General Motors prototype supercharged Corvettes actually came about. Today, we're going to look at a top secret engineering masterpiece designed and built by General Motors engineer Zora Duntop in 1959. You are going to see one of only a few supercharged Rochester injection units in existence. We're going to let the cameras roll yeah, and capture the conversations from two yes, Corvette experts, Dave in... Crane and Larry Hover. We hope you enjoy. So this is Dave Crane and, uh, and Crane's Corvette. And we got yeah, Larry yeah. Hofer over here. Larry, wave your hand. There he is over there back there. Yeah. Um, and the other day I posted some photos of Larry's 62. The maroon on, one. The maroon, maroon one. And, and I got a lot of. A lot of interest, but a lot of people said, oh, this is bogus, this is bullshit, it never yeah, happened. Yeah, okay. Whatever, okay, BS. Okay. But I wanted to, I know you have one, so tell us a little bit about yours. Yeah, so these guys drive a mile down the street to my place, David Crane here in San Diego, and here's the real one. Okay. Uh, produced by Zora Arkitz of Duntoff, and uh, Luca Tita, the, the, the dino engineer who helped. The and reason, I, there's a secret for everybody. The reason... Why did Zora Duntoff win Pikes Peak Hill Climb and set the new world record so easily in the Serve 1? Why is that? Because Luca Tita dynoed the motor run at 14,000 feet in the General Motors Dyno Lab. Well, the same time they were doing that, before, th before that, they did this. Okay. So they, <clears throat> they, they started testing injected superchargers. So John Camden and... Luca Tita. Luca Tita and, John and Dolza, uh, John Dolza and another guy John came Dolza, over. There are four of them. Four of them, another guy. Jordan Duntoff, John Dolza, Luca yeah. Tia, and John Camden. John Camden. They came over as a group and started working on this and dyno they testing a engineering. Research lab. In, a, in a dyno research lab of General Motors, which nobody else had the equipment to do this yeah. stuff anyway. So they took a, a Rochester fuel injection unit and married it up with uh, Detroit Diesels, which, he tr which General Motors owned anyway, Detroit Diesels uh, 451 blower. Okay. So this is the original 451 blower, and it did have, this. that's the way it was, it had the GM General Motors name on it and everything, the way it was. But then they and married they it. they had it on the 451. When they went to the 453 series, they, they eliminated the G GM General Motors thing from it, the right. name plate, now this. So meanwhile, we had that. But before this, <clears throat> we gotta go over the other photos here. Okay. To show <clears throat> here's the dyno lab that's how it really started so now we have a fuel injection unit with the with the supercharger on top in the dyno lab and this one they're using uh, regular V belts okay and that was a cog <clears throat> right and now we're looking at the uh, this is the passenger side obviously it's a 57 motor nine fin valve covers no no choke hole Fuel injection, exhaust manifold, the, the special filter, everything's all dying. It's all 57 vintage And that's parts. similar to this injection here, right? Yeah, and that's what, what we got that there. One. That's a 57. This is what it would come on a stock fuel, right? Or stock fuel yeah, injected. For, so basically, you use this one, which is a 4520 unit, okay? Okay. A mid 57, typical unit. So they took what they have. And that's the one that's driven by the distributor. Yeah, that's the drive the shaft for it, right? Distributor. That's ready to and that go. drives, the, it goes right here, right? And that right. drives the yeah, fuel pump. Yeah, it runs in there. And it, pump but yet that's okay. a high pressure pump right yeah that goes into your uh fuel and that's meter the assembly. calibrated diaphragm in there yep and the fuel meter assembly and all this so they found a way they must have cut the top off and then married and it. Modif modified it <clears throat> to put the blower on top right. and there it is. Okay. then they proceeded to test multiple engines okay uh multiple engines at 283s 283 horsepower probably the 250 horsepower with the uh, dyno charts here from general motors this is all general motors documents to document everything. This okay. is a blown injected factory stocker. 283 so. cubic inch V8. Yep. yep. Wow. Dyno exhaust. So people are going to ask what HP. what kind of power did this make? Okay, so this this is a 330 lift hydraulic cam. Okay. And so uh, I guess uh, yeah, run. we're in the RPMs. Well, like There's RPMs down here at the bottom. Okay, it looks and like they seem to cut it off around 5,000. So it looks like around like what 225 200, or 225 so. horsepower, okay. something like that corrected curve and then, and then with a Duntoff cam which is quite quite different and this is with the fuel injection and the supercharger oh yeah yeah i gotta okay. watch the follow down dotted lines okay so now we're looking at we're like now we're 300 looking right? standard fuel injection 315 318 standard fuel injection was down here okay, okay. but 
with a roots blower has the long lines and the short ones. Look at that. <clears throat> the 320 horsepower at at only 5,500 RPM. Yeah, then it starts falling uh, off. Then it starts falling off. And then the same thing is similar with the 398 lift hydraulic cam. You got about 200 and what, 250 horsepower. So but pretty, the big difference was with the, with the supercharger, supercharger and fuel injection, uh, with a high lift cam, Duntoff cam, uh, around 315, 320. But we, they, they only ran it up to like 5,500 RPMs and it yeah. dropped off or something. When? Luca Tia cast us up. This manifold down here has his name cast in it right down here. here. Okay. They cast the manifold and they machined this piece here. This is original with the GM here. This is the 451 blower. They only made it for like five years. Then they went to the 453. Everybody's seen a 453. Nobody's seen a 451. We have like two of them back at the shop. This one here. It has a steel plate on the back. It uses oil pressure here from the engine to lubricate all the bearings. The newer blowers like we have all have sealed bearings so they work fine. This was the first use of a Gilmer belt drive in any of the Chevy stuff. Then they finally put this on the Pontiac overhead cam six, used that same belt drive. But this was the first time they did it, right here. And uh, John Doza, no, John Doza, um, Lou Cotilla was a 21 year old kid that actually got to build this piece part, this piece, this piece, and put all this together. He was trained at GM Engineering in Detroit Diesel Superchargers, and Zora Duntoff brought him over to work in his lab because he knew about this blower. Okay. So. And so, like, this is similar to yours, has four fuel injectors, right? right. They're mechanical that injectors. Was, that, that was actually John Camden, you're right. Right, it was John Camden. John Camden. He was okay. the kid. Right, he was right. 21 years old. Yeah, he was the youngest one. And his job was to get all the hot rod parts that anybody made for Chevy, bring it back to Chevrolet and put it on the dyno and test it. Okay. Yeah, his he was, expertise he was still was around. Right he was still around two years ago when he interviewed him. I okay. called him up and talked. Yeah. He was, he was talking about this car. Actually, my car, not your car. Your car wasn't ready yet. No, but he's talking when, about the unit and all the other information correct. about it, yeah. When we were in Scottsdale, he was the speaker there, and he was going, yeah, this I remember. That was, I a, long, that was a while ago, too. That was 10 years ago. Yeah, okay, yeah. so that been 2014 or something, huh? Uh, we probably got it listed on yeah. someone's paper. So you said these are air filters? Yeah, these are vents. Just vents, atmospheric filters. vent? It's just like, is that just for well, atmospheric pressure? it has pressure? to have air inside this block for these injectors to work. Okay. Now, this is the stock injector block off of a regular fuel injection unit. Normally you have one here. One here, yes, and two over here. But then they modified it. No, they're not modified. Oh, they're but do the relocated. stock ones have these air filters on them? No, not the filters, but they have the block. The block, okay. The block is the same. Yes, but okay. they do have a vent system. They're turned around the other way, and they have the rubber hose between that goes ties these guys. Okay, they have I get to be it. They have to be vented. Atmospheric pressure, and they're supposed to be at the same level as the air box, but they didn't do it on this one. The later ones had the pipe that went over like this, went over here. Oh, they plugged it on yours. No, there it is. It's not in there. The, the little vent pipe that and goes And this is over. like a big float bowl. Now there's something, there's a plate off there's of this. There's a plate right? that goes on this. I take that off. The, is that like the float, the needle and seat? Basically? No, the needle and seat's right here. Oh, right there, okay. You'll see the float's inside. It's right okay. in here. You Correct. can move okay. it up and down. But I uh, I leave the plate off so I can check the float when I go to start it. Now on a regular, uh, let me ask a question. On a regular, naturally aspirated This is gonna be one, really amazing. Na naturally aspirated, it would, it would only have intake manifold vacuum, but this can measure boost and vacuum, correct? The okay, diaphragm goes in both directions. This, this piece here doesn't know it's supercharged. It okay. does not care. This piece here just doesn't How does care. it get fuel enrichment? It, that's fuel. It's from this line right here. Okay. See, this line comes over and ties into this. So it's got a venturi right here. Okay. That creates a vacuum that makes this diaphragm work. Okay. What changed between the fuel injection aspects of it, we went from eight injectors to four injectors here. Correct. And it uses this part here, which they only made for one year, maybe, Okay. in 57. And I think Olsen Bell used it too. That little guy there is like unobtainium. Well, it's You'll never X, find it's one. It's not a T, yeah. Yeah, so they changed the nozzle sizes inside here. And this one here, when it was first, when we started playing with it, we were really looking forward to seeing what it was, but it was so fat, they must have been running on alcohol in this motor because the nozzle sizes was 32 thousandths. The okay. ones in mine are 21 and 24. And a stock one on a stock fuel injection unit like that the one back, back there, there is 11 thousandths. Wow, it's about so quite a, big... a little bit bigger than your hair. Yeah. But they run all the fuel through these guys right here, period. That's main. They also have, let's see, 
Now this goes to that. See, mine's got another one that goes right here. So this one origins for boost? This must be for the boost then. No, this is all vacuum on this side. Really? Yeah, this is okay. This one measures oh, yeah, the mass vacuum. of air. Okay. This measures the air mass going through. Okay. And this one here measures the density because this is vacuum. It's on the back side of the butterfly. So this guy here is density. This guy here is air mass. And that's the only thing it takes on here. Between those two guys here, you can make this blower work just fine. Mine has another one right here that we that was used on one of the different versions of this blower that was like a fuel enrichment for starting the okay. choke. So when we start mine, this guy works right here. This car, this one doesn't have it. This one's a little bit different. Every one they made was a little bit different. And we've got information on like five or six of them. And each one's a little bit different. They have different, like one of them had an extra line here. We haven't quite How many out. do you think there are out there or originally were ever made, what do you think? When you cast up, when you make the tooling to cast up a manifold, once you spend $100,000 to make the tooling, you're not gonna cast just one manifold. Yeah. So I would imagine they cast five or 10, maybe as high as 20. Okay. We don't know where any of them are at. We know where this one's at, we know where mine's at. Um, we've got parts at the shop for another one. And then we've got magazine articles that show maybe five different ones. There was one at the Autorama in New York, a different car at the Autorama in Chicago. And then there's one that was done for a dentist in Detroit that was in a magazine article. And I think there was one more that was kind of documented, but we don't, oh, there was one in a Studebaker. Oh, okay. Luca Tia had one in a Studebaker that he street raced. That was kind of cool too. So, and I know on yours, you have a little blow off valve on the intake manifold. Right. Where, does Back this here. one have it as well? No, this one doesn't have it because so, they did all their R&D okay. on the dyno at Chevrolet. When we did all this, we were starting from scratch and so we kept popping the blower off. Yeah. So we put a valve back in the back, just like a blow off valve on a current yeah. blower. That when the blower backfires, instead of shredding all the teeth off the belt, it just popped the valve okay. off and then it so went. It doesn't have so it. we had to figure out how to do all the tuning because we had no idea where this was at. Cool. Even in ours, we locked the distributor to 20 degrees and it, it has no advance. But it really doesn't make any difference because okay. we're not trying to go fast with this. We just want to have it put together. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, so, he's Dave, obviously, already. you're a Corvette expert. Yeah. How does this particular... We use that term loosely. Yeah. We okay. use that term loosely. Well, I don't think anybody knows more about this stuff than you do. Okay. And maybe Larry. Right, probably not. Yeah. How does oh. this drive performance-wide based... If you had a stock fuel-injected versus this supercharged version, what's, I mean, what's the noticeable difference? I mean, do you... More. Similar. The only thing you can say, more. Similar. It's very similar. I'll need you a little bit more horsepower from this, uh, but uh, keep in mind the age of it, and it doesn't, you know, the boost is, is not very much. Maybe okay. you get five pounds of boost on it at best. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> because of wear and other things on it. So it's it's more it's historical. Like it's more historical, yeah. It really it's, it's an artifact. It's history. I mean, it's, it's a historical artifact. Because the secret project GM did, and, yeah. and nobody knew they were even doing this. So again, it was a secret R and D. Yeah, they never publicized. The only reason it ever came out was because one of the engineers, uh, John Camden, published these photographs and this dyno information in sure. a 1980 in a uh, magazine, right? Yeah, a magazine article. So this was that's where it first popped up. Okay. And then for some reason he gave me the information. They published it, and then uh, piece by piece more information came out, and uh, I knew where the original. I know where this unit was. That's I knew a Merle thing. Dupree you owned it. One was. Yeah. Um, I'd seen it at a party once with Chuck Smith and Gene Smith and Merle Dupree. And Merle Dupree had it. Wow. And I, and I, I didn't know the history of it until Larry dug up some of it. I dug up some more. We kept we kept finding more out. We kind of figured the origin of the whole sure. thing. That's when I went up and bought the unit from Merle. When I realized what it was. Merle didn't have much information, but we finally figured out that, yeah, this, this is what they used. It. Once we found the dyno charts and the rest of the information, we pieced together the whole thing. That's Yeah, we found yeah. out it was real. It took that a, was lot, a lot of research. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Not only real, but actually it was, it's, it's the unit they used yeah, for the part. testing. They actually made yeah. it. Yeah, they actually made it, tested it, and they proved oh. they could get more horsepower with it with a supercharger with it. So it took and, you guys quite a while to get this all pieced together to make it work that yeah, hard. Yeah, several years. Yeah, several years. This is more information. Now, once I bought the unit... Um, this I became an artifact. Mine became a driver. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sort of, yeah. I mean, it runs really good up to about 3,500. Open the page. Yeah, now, here's a page you want to take a picture of is this one. 
of an after, which is not that. This. Okay. Those are basically your charts. But no, I think this I is. Yeah. No, this is the important thing. This right important. here plus the, the date. date. And Absolutely. The, the General Motors Chevrolet work order. Yes. You have to explain it to them, though. Okay. That's well, a GM have, work order, You have to explain right? it to me. Well, <laughs> what does it say? I can't run out my glasses on. It just says sheet number and then work yeah. order 811-4, yeah, file number order. 4. Photo was taken April 2nd, 1957. Yeah. And the title is CX6564. Now CX, gotta, that's a project. Get okay. it? That's a project. CX six five six four. So if you went, if you work in GM archives, okay, which you have a library, if you went in archives, you use some of this information. You can go back. You should be able to go back. If I that's miss. a work order that they're working to, right, to get paid. Yes. You know, for their budget. So that's their budget number, and and Dunta wow. found a way to charge it to the Where piston durability this testing budget. Okay. Get so it? this is it, but now it resides inside this car. Well, that's it for this video, folks. We hope you enjoyed it. We're going to try and keep you up to date, and hopefully we'll be able to do another video feature soon showing both Larry Hofer's and David Crane's Corvettes running and driving. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and we'll get you another video coming here shortly. Thank you.